This is a stick-up. Open the cash register. That must be the doctor. Are you Frank Rella? Yes, sir. I'm a police officer. We want to talk to you about a shooting in Brooklyn on Tuesday night. Talk to me? Why? You'll find out about that downtown. Will you come along, please? My mother's very sick. If you don't mind... This can't wait, Mr. Rella. Listen, the doctor's coming any minute. I'm sorry. Maybe she won't live more than a couple of days. If you want to talk to me, talk to me here. All right. You've been identified as the man who shot and killed the bartender in Brooklyn. The stories that shock a nation, move them, make them laugh, begin here. Like this one. I'm Paul Stewart. The headline was 12 years old. A tavern owner shot. An obscure young man arrested on suspicion. The kind of story you read and quickly forget. But not this one. For today, 12 years after it happened, it was one of the biggest stories Edward Maury, the New York World Telegram, ever worked on. It was a story that involved the greatest city in America and the fate of one obscure young man. They're ready. They're rolling. The presses are rolling. I'm deadline. Years work, huh? That's right, Ed. He's been in jail all this time? Every minute of it. Now, you think he's innocent? Yes. Where did you get the time, Bernie? Huh? Well, for all of this. At law school. Making inspector. I had to find the time, Ed. I arrested that boy. Yeah, I saw him tried. I saw him sent up for life. I thought he got a rotten deal. I couldn't forget it. Why was it a bad deal? Because the prosecution witness only saw the killer for 35 seconds in a dimly lit room. One witness? One for the prosecution, one for the defense. The third man in the room was the victim. How did it happen, Bernie? Well, the date was August 12, 1946. 2.30 a.m., Thompson's Bar and Grill in Brooklyn. It was closing time. Schneider, the barkeep, was behind the bar. Hovick, the waiter, was piling the chairs. And Thompson, the owner of the grill, was just getting ready to leave. This is a sticker. Open the register. Come on, move. Move it. It happened that fast. Two men saw him. Schneider, the bartender, and Hovick, the waiter. Schneider was close enough to fight with him. Hovick was across the room under the table. They brought him in for identification. I brought him in. Hovick was there. Hovick was sure. Schneider was there. But Schneider was uncertain. Was it that simple? No. 
When Hovick first saw Reller in the lineup, he couldn't identify him either. Then Hovick left the room. He came back ten minutes later and finally put the finger on Reller. At the trial, too? Yes. You mean on that alone? Frank Reller was sent up to prison for life. Well, look, Bernie, there are minutes at all police lineups. Where are the minutes? If there were any, they weren't introduced at the trial. What does the DA's office say? Sherman won't reopen the case. Oh, now, look, Bernie, Sherman's a strictly honest guy. I know that. But he's strictly wrong in this case. Okay. I'll read your stuff and try to check the facts. But now, look, that's all I can promise you. Well, that's all I want you to do, Ed. Thanks. I appreciate it. So Don't long. Mention. So long. Oh, would you get me District Attorney Sherman's office, please? Yeah, I know, Ed, I know. But the man had a fair trial and the jury was unanimous. Furthermore, the appellate division upheld the verdict. No, no, I've got to oppose a motion for a new trial, particularly in view of the man's previous record. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ed. <laughs> Yes, my son was arrested for larceny when he was 18. He was going with a wild bunch of boys, a gang. They broke into a store just, just to show there were big shots. Did your son ever serve time, Mr. Rella? A year. That's how they had his picture at the police. Picture when he was 18. And from that, seven years later, a man picks him out and says he was a murderer. Well, now, how do you know he wasn't? Get out. Get out of my house, please. Mr. Rella, I can't help you if I don't if ask If you don't questions. believe he didn't do it. I didn't say that. I just said I had to ask questions. Well, let me ask a question. There's a boy who gets up and goes to a hospital in the morning, lets himself be cut, gives his mother a bone transplant. Does that boy go out the same night and kill somebody? Tell me that. I don't know that much about people, Mr. Rella. But I'm going to try to find out. And uh, that's where he stood. Yeah, right where you were. Hey, and I was here. Right where I am. Thompson, he was over here. See? Now, Hovic, that was the waiter. He was over here by this booth, see? Well, then it was a table. Hey, since I bought the place, I put in boots. Yeah, you get a better type of trade with boots. You know, it encourages the ladies to come in. You know, this is genuine leatherette. Let's sit on it, huh? Now, you say Hobick was like this. Yeah, yeah, until the shooting started, see? <laughs> and he was under the table. <laughs> and you were trying to hold on to the stick-up man. Oh, frankly, I don't know what I was trying to do. Hold on or what? See, it was all over before it started. Anyway, see, I was over here. Oh, this is a stick-up, he says. Open the cash register. <laughs> so I turned. So Thompson, he goes after the guy. Bang! 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 So, I run out, and I grab him. And we struggle, and he socks me, and I go down, and then he runs away. You were that close to the stick-up man? Yeah, I sure was. But yet you couldn't say it was him in the lineup. No. No, I couldn't. Not even with the glasses. See, the hold-up guy wore glasses. Yeah, it sounded Rella. Oh. Hey, these are comfortable seats, huh? Yes, they are. You know, I had to pay extra for this genuine leatherette, but I think it's worth it. Say, where can I find this man, Hovick? Well, I don't know. I haven't seen him for 12 years. Listen, he was strictly a floater. He could be any place. Listen, you want to know something? What? I think it's about time somebody gave that guy Reller a decent break. Thanks. And that man from the newspaper was here again, asking questions. Maybe something good will come, Frankie. Today, he told me, he's going to see the foreman of the jury. I pray for you all the time, Frankie. Today, he told me...
told me he's going to see the foreman of the jury. Then we took a poll. At the end of the first ballot, it was seven to five for acquittal. Fifteen hours later, we sentenced him to life in prison. Have you thought at all about the case since the trial? When you phoned, I got this out of my file. I've written to six of the jurors almost every year since the day we sent Reller up. We've even formed a committee. Was it a fair trial? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I sell securities. What is a fair trial? We thought we were doing what was best. But there was a lot of excitement over other killings at the time. We read so much in the newspapers. You were allowed to have newspapers? Well, why not? Well, it's not usually allowed in a capital case. Well, we read about this wave of killings and... I don't know, maybe we got all worked up and just wanted to punish somebody. Now, if the trial were held again... I'd never vote guilty. Thanks, Mr. Harris. Oh, uh, can I keep these for a while? I'll return it. Of course. I may use your name in a story. Go right ahead. I'll do anything I can to help. Thanks. Maori. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Bernie. Yes, I called you. Look, we're using a piece on Rella tomorrow. I just thought you'd like to know. <laughs> Front page. Where do you think we'd use a story like this? No, 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 look. Don't get too worked up. It's only a story. Only the first step. Right. The Rella case caught the attention of the entire city. The district attorney's office was not the last to take notice. Okay, Ed, come on over here. We'll talk about it. Now, never mind a restaurant. We'll have lunch here on the city. Right. Miss Hammond, will you please come in? I want to order lunch. Thank you. I don't care how many juries you saw, they all voted guilty, didn't they? Because they believed one uncertain witness. Oh, come on, Ed. What was uncertain about him? He put the finger on Rella. He said, that's the guy. At the trial, yes. Not at the police lineup. At first, he couldn't identify Rella. Oh, you're telling me something new? I was assistant prosecutor at that trial. I question Hovick. Here. Page 48 of the official transcript. Here. Question to Hovick. You could not identify Rella? Answer, that is right. Question, then what did you do? Answer, I said I wanted to see his profile. Question, but you didn't see it then. Instead, you left the room for a short period. Answer, that is correct. Well, now, you call that a reliable witness? He was so confused, he left the room. Ed, what do you want? I want to know what really happened at that lineup. Where are the minutes? There were none. There must have been. There must be some place, Bill. He was convicted by a lineup, not a jury. You know, if that boy didn't have a record... Come on, Ed, let's eat lunch, huh? We're wasting the city's money. What about Schneider's testimony? He was closest to the killer. The jury believed Hovick, not Schneider. Why? Because the crime rate was rising and somebody had to be punished. Now, you don't believe that. Yes, I do believe it, Bill. I read the transcript, and I read the newspapers. The public wanted a victim. Oh, well. And what's more, I think Hovick lied. I think it was the only chance in his life to make a grandstand play, and he made it. That would make a good newspaper story, but it just wasn't so. Prove it. Find Hovick. I'm sorry, Ed. All right. I will. Come on. Eat your lunch. Okay, I'll eat. And then I'm going to find Hovick. And I'm going to get you to reopen the case. And that will make a good newspaper story. In 
Washington, the Secretary of State announced the resumption of negotiations for a top-level meeting. And the President has returned from his vacation to the White House, where it is expected he will confer with the Secretary late this evening. On the local scene, a committee of jurors who served at the trial of Frank Rella 12 years ago has petitioned the District Attorney's office to reopen the case. Now for the sports roundup. Did you hear it, Sammy? Did you hear what it said on the radio? We found Hovick, Ed. He's working in a diner in San Antonio. I just talked to the chief of police. They'll keep an eye on him until we need him. Good. Now we tackle Sherman. All I want is the truth. Is that clear? I'm here to forget this case or reopen it. Yes, sir. Do you care for a smoke, Frank? No, thank you, sir. Did you ever own a gun? No, sir, I didn't. Where were you at 2.30 on the morning when Thompson was killed? We stayed up till about 3, gabbing about baseball, things like that. It was too hot to sleep. A police officer with the lineup said you had a large red mark on your face. Was that from a fight? No, it wasn't. It was a sunburn. I even had to go to the hospital to get it treated. Wasn't that your brother's gun you borrowed? I didn't have a gun, neither did he. But you were wearing a sports jacket. I don't know what I was wearing. Honest, I don't. Your mother was sick at the time of your arrest, wasn't she? Yes, she was. She died three months later. I didn't know about it till I read it in your paper. Pa wrote she was doing fine. Well, if your mother was so sick and you had just given her a bone transplant, what were you doing up at 3 o'clock in the morning talking baseball? I don't know. I just was. Uh, maybe you needed money for medical expenses for her, huh? Sure we needed money. We always did. And maybe you figured a robbery was the easiest way to do it. I didn't do it! I didn't hold up any place! I never killed anybody! Frank, will you take a lie detector test? Yes, sir, I will. And if you come through that, will you gamble with the electric chair? What? If I reopen this case, you may have to stand trial again. If you're convicted this time, it won't be life imprisonment. It'll be the death penalty. You realize that? Yes, sir. All right. We'll give you a couple of days to think it over. There's nothing to think over, Mr. Sherman. I didn't do the killing. I'll go to the chair if nobody believes me. Guard. Bernie, Ed Maury. Yes, I know how late it is. Look, I'm ready for Hovick. Can you get him up here right away? I've got the minutes of that lineup. You know the ones they couldn't find? We're ready to go. Well, get Hovick here by tomorrow. And then, Mr. Hovick, you said you wanted to see the man's profile. Uh, that's right, sir. But you didn't look at his profile just then. You left the room for about 10 minutes. Uh, yes, sir, I did. Well, that agrees with the trial testimony, Ed. All right, now, supposing that wasn't what happened. Supposing he did see the man's profile before he left the room. But I didn't. If he did, he would have lied on the stand. I tell he you. He would have lied. Now, if the principal witness lied, the state would have no case. No, it would not. All right. Now, Bill, I've got a copy here of the police lineup minutes. You know the ones that weren't available at the trial? Where did you get that? Court stenographer found them. Copy in the files, as simple as that. Now then, are you telling the truth that you didn't see the man's profile your first time in the room? Sure I was. Okay. Let's take a look at the minutes. Quote, Detective Johnson, speaking to the witness Hovick. Walk right over there and look at these men. Go ahead down the line. Hovick does so. Detective Johnson, 
All you men in the lineup, the three of you, turn around. They do so. Detective Johnson, can you point out the man? Hovick. No, sir, I can't. Hovick is then asked to leave the room. Proceedings adjourned for 10 minutes. Close quote. Then what? Quote. The witness, Hovick, returns. Detective Johnson, now do you see the man? Hovick. Yes, sir, that's him. But you did see that man's profile your first time in the room. You lied on the stand. I didn't. You want to see these, Bill? I certainly do. Would you wait in the other room, please? How could I identify the guy if I did not see his profile? You were right. It was a grandstand play. Wanted to be an important witness. I'll call Judge Cummings and have him set up a hearing. And, Your Honor, I respectfully submit that the duties of the District Attorney's Office are twofold. That the guilty shall not escape, nor the innocent suffer unjustly. Now, with this new evidence, it becomes obvious that the state's principal witness committed perjury. And the minimum proof necessary for a submission to a jury was lacking. And finally, Your Honor, I submit the report of the lie detector test that the pathometer clearly indicates a pattern of truthful responses. Your Honor, I move this court dismiss the indictment. The motion is granted. The indictment dismissed and the defendant discharged. Thank you, Your Honor. Frank. <laughs> Davis. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Davis. Thank you. Thank Take it you. easy, Mr. Frank. Maury. Mr. Ma Mr. Maury, what do you say to a man who saved your life? Nothing, Frank. Nothing. Glad we could help. Mr. Maury. Thanks. Today, Frank Reller is a free man. The witness, Havoc, who testified against him, was tried for perjury. Here is the last story that Edward Maury wrote. It took a long time to write. It took him a good year. But for Frank Reller, it was 12 years. I think what Frank Reller said the day he came out of the detention pen is kind of important. I'd like to read it to you. It's funny how a guy appreciates the little things after being away so long. When I got off the train at Grand Central from Dannemora three weeks ago, and the officer steered me into the street, I looked up at the glorious sky full of stars and Thank God for making a dream come true. You see, I hadn't seen the sky at night since I went away 12 years ago. When I was moved from one prison to another, Sing Sing to Attica to Danamora, it was always during the daytime. At Danamora, lifers are locked up at 5.30 p.m. after mess. Isn't the night sky some sight? This meets this story's deadline.